What's up guys? Stan here from Rocky Creek. I hope everybody's doing really well. Before I start today's video, I gotta say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to each and every one of you who have supported us along this journey. You know, we have just gone past our one year anniversary of the very first video we ever released. And that first video was really just kind of more for like our friends and family as kind of like a little snapshot of what we were doing. Um, and you know, I told myself that I want to start sharing some of this because I was influenced by so many people and I had no idea what I was doing. And because of them, I now have all of this. But I never, ever, ever, ever dreamed or thought that we would reach the 1000 subscriber mark ever. But because so many of you guys encouraged us along the way, we continue to go. We continue to expand and we continue to try new adventures. And you all have been a tremendous help and advice and many of our successes are because of you. And so for that, we say thank you. Thank you for the experience. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the advice. Thank you for your friendship. And more importantly, thank you for sticking with us and helping us out in making Rocky Creek Homestead even better now than what it was when we first started. Mater, did you know we got a thousand subscribers? I think you, you got a lot of them in here. We appreciate that. We got a thousand subscribers, Henry. We got a thousand subscribers, Olivia. Q-tip, Q-tip. We got a thousand subscribers. Are you excited? Starfire, we got a thousand subscribers. Hey, Scotty, we got a thousand subscribers, buddy. Madison, what? stop, I got, I got something important to tell you. What? I got something important. What? Hey, what? we got a thousand subscribers. Yay! Hey guys, but on a serious note, no, really, we do really thank you. We really appreciate it. Um, you know, it took one year and six days to get to that 1,000 subscriber mark. It's been a lot of hard work. It's been a lot of, you know, just countless hours of trying to get in some content for you. It's been a lot more work than what I ever anticipated. And there were moments where I thought, this might be too much. I don't know if I can manage it, but your encouragement kept me going. So with that being said, let's get into today's content because it has been a week of just like a whole lot going on this week. So much so that between working full time and only having little bits in the afternoon to get stuff done, I'll be honest with you, I didn't have a chance to record a lot of it, but I'm gonna show you where we're at. And the big thing we're gonna do today too, is we gotta catch some chickens, and we gotta cut some wings, because I got a few that are getting way too far out on the property, mainly two in particular. So we'll go through that real quick as well. But before we start cutting some wings, let's show you a whole bunch of new things we got going on here on the homestead right now. Some of which are incomplete, but it's in progress, and I wanna make sure you're up to speed on what's going on. So guys, you may see my first big thing I got done during this week. I got all this done in one afternoon after getting home from work, and I've got our electric Premier One poultry net set up. This is a poultry net that I use down where the garden is, down over there, and we raised our egg layers in this for a year and a half before I put them in a more permanent area. So I never had a predator get them while they're in this, so I'm hoping this is gonna work for our meat birds this time and something won't get them. So obviously, in conjunction with that, we got our meat birds out on grass for the first time about three nights ago. So let's go in here and check them out. Turn this off so I don't shock myself. Been there, done that. Old Madison wants to come check them out too. She hadn't seen them out on grass. She's seen them from a distance, but not up close. So the green tarp is on here temporary, guys. That's not gonna stay here very long. You can see them. They're out here on the grass, eating up their food. I am still running their heat lamp. We got some nights that are getting down. We're supposed to have two nights uh, this week that are gonna get down into the upper 30s. So I did want to have the heat lamp in here just in case for them. But as you can see from where the light is, there's plenty of room around this coop that they can get away from the warmth. I'm glad I moved these guys out here though because they weren't feathering out all that well, which Cornishes don't feather out the greatest because they're built for growing, not for feather production. Um, but I've noticed since I've bought them outside, they are definitely feathering out 
much faster over these last couple days. And I read that sometimes you gotta get them exposed to some cold so that you know natural instincts kick in. But this guy, he's only a few weeks old and I mean, he's getting big fast. What, buddy? Um, do you just like uh, leave the door open so they can just like come out of it? Yeah, so since I'm not gonna try to move them all over the place, since we're using the electric netting, I'm trying to get them just to come out here and forage around. Now, if they wear a lot of this grass out, then we'll move the whole fence and move them all together. But we're just going to kind of let them go around, and then at night, um, I'll close them up at that time. Okay. So, guys, you can see we did move the water out here for, with that we switched out for the rent coop cups, and it's working out great. And I've already had to fill this water up once. They got it down to about a quarter of the way, but you can see they've taken to it really, really well no mess at all and it's working out fantastic so we got 21 of the cornish crosses from myers poultry and i will tell you we did lose one we lost that one two days ago um, and i noticed it was kind of breathing very hard so I feel like whatever issue it had was probably either with its heart or with its respiratory system. Um, I separated it, tried to nurse it along, and ultimately I went to bed that night. When I came out the next morning, it had passed away. So thus far, we have lost one Cornish cross to unknown reasons. What are you doing? I do, I like, I do have to get out. So guys, I'm not gonna go into great details about our Premier One setup. You can find those all over YouTube. I can just tell you, we've had this one now for three years and I've been very happy with it. It's very simple. You just got your solar energizer. You got a positive and negative line that runs off of that. And you're just gonna hook one end up, which I'm pretty sure the black is your negative, to a grounding rod, which I pounded in the ground. And then your positive will go right there to the actual fence itself. Big thing is you just gotta watch for high weeds and grass that it doesn't mess up the current running through your fence. And if you take care of those things and you got enough sun, you're in business. Let's cut this back on. Mater, you like having your friends next door? You let bad things happen to the last crew, keep an eye on them for me. All right, I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. All right, we appreciate it, be good. Now, as we had to show you the other thing that we've had go on this week, you may have noticed that that one gray broiler was not in there with those meat chickens. I came out one day and something actually attacked it during the day. Um, I went out that morning, fed, everything was fine. Sun came up and that was at about eight o'clock that morning. I came out at three o'clock that afternoon. And once again, something dug a hole, same kind of hole as last time, got in there, but this time didn't take it. It had a deep wound at its wing area and it had died from that. So I still don't know what this predator is, but we're gonna hope that this electric netting is going to take care of our problem so yes the very last gray broiler that we did have did get killed same way as the others did unfortunately what in the world are you doing i have no idea these these children you can tell it's getting warm they get outside which i love them being in but they get so crazy so here's the reason why i had to get those guys outside about a week earlier than i really had thought i would number one they smelled god awful so we wanted to get them out for that reason as one but then two i got a complete shock call from the post office that that second batch of gray broilers showed up. Myers poultry, although the chickens have been extremely healthy and I gave them kudos last time for giving me information when they shipped, it must be back and forth with them because this time no notification other than a phone call from the post office while I was in the middle of my work day. But check them out. So yep, got another round of the gray broilers. Everybody's doing healthy. We did lose just one chick two days after receiving them. Uh, but everybody else seems to be very healthy and doing very well. So they're just set up in here. We'll let these guys grow out and we'll get these guys on pasture as soon as they feather out. So what issue does that create? I need more room for chickens. So as you can see behind me, I had to start whipping together another chicken tractor. So this one isn't complete. I still need to run some wire across the top here. And then I'm gonna use a tarp to cover the whole top and half of the sides around the back half. Now, I can't accept credit for this design. This is actually Lumna Acres $30 chicken coop in 30 minutes. Now, I don't know where he bought his materials from or if obviously material 
prices were cheaper back then because if you've been in the store lately you'll about have a stroke when you see lumber pricing but i will say this was extremely affordable if i had to guess between everything i had to purchase i probably actually have about 60 bucks in this coupe that's counting the screws and all so it still is a super cheap coupe to throw together but for exactly the way he did it it was very reasonably priced and it was very simple to build i'll show you some of the cool features so you got the flip up top right here which makes easy access and then i did do he calls it his upgrades i put the shelves in each corner just like we have in our coupe now we have the one shelf but i'm gonna do feet on one corner and the water on the other corner all it's really made out of is fence pickets some spindles some treated spindles like you would use for a deck and some chicken wire and some screws and that's pretty much about it so we'll run the wire right there get the tarp on and i'll show you the final final outcome of that when it's all said and done and we'll probably do a little follow-up video on that and move it out on grass but i think this is going to work out really well for us so now this isn't a new thing but we'll give you a follow-up on those im samanis because all four are doing very well but the more that they're growing the darker they're getting and i really like how they're looking let me grab one and show it to you see if my buddy madison can hold it for me so i can show y'all all right so check out this super cool i am samani madison is super excited about these guys are you squeezing the death out of it no. so you can see here's the white toes that they were so bothered by that i got a smoking deal on but they are definitely darkening up the bigger that they're getting they're a very slender looking chicken so i'm kind of curious to see how that works out which what i did read says that they're more of a medium body chicken so we're not going to keep them out very long i just want to give you all an update on this awesome looking i am samani chickens um, you can see nice good dark coloring um, so i'm excited as these guys keep growing and let you get to see a final result so guys the last update i got for you that all has been done since the last video which we're talking less than a week is we did get the chickens moved from outside of the pen to inside of the pen so the rest of the chickens can start to get more acclimated to them you can see size wise these have grown plenty and i think they're definitely to the size that they'll be able to hold their own just fine here in this coop and they'll probably be fast enough that nobody's really going to get to hurt them as long as they don't get pinned in somewhere so we're going to let them hang out here for about another day or two and then we're going to go ahead and integrate these guys in with the coop and that'll make life a lot easier so guys that's going to wrap up about all the updates for this week but now both of the main two chickens that i need to get they're in the run right now which will make it easier to catch them than if they're out here just running all over the property so i'm going to get that premier one poultry hook i'm going to get my sidekick madison and we're going to see if we can't wrangle these guys up so we can do some trimming the only problem i do have is one of the ones that keeps getting out is one of the sapphire gems which they pretty much look very much alike so every sapphire gem might get cut collateral damage but i got to get it done all right, here's what we're gonna do though. I'll catch them, hand them to you, you hold them, and then I'll cut them. Okay. Then we can do that? Yeah. You freaked out last time we were doing this and was yelping like crazy. Yeah. I need you to be calm, okay? And don't be eating all the chicken poop. Cool. That's disgusting. Yeah. Got it. Oh my god, that is huge. It's a big one. Are you going to be able to hold it or do I need to do it? Uh, just tell me where I need to cut it. All right, it's going to be a little hard to cut though, okay? So, see these long feathers? Yeah. You're going to cut. Do not cut up here into these small feathers. You're going to cut right here along these big feathers. Okay? Yep. Squeeze hard. Yeah, you might need to hold the chicken. Yeah. I can I can probably do it. Let me see. Can you just spread her wing out for me? No, no. So grab. Look. See, I get my hand underneath it, and then I kind of. Can you see my hand underneath? And I kind of fan it out that way. Okay. No, use your other hand. No, oh, I don't want to cut your fingers. Okay. That's pretty good right there. In, in, in the near your fingers? Uh, no. Right, yep, keep it.
deeper to your tight. There, so much easier, okay? Look how much easier. Yeah, she just pooped. It's because she's stressed. We're stressing her out. All right, put her down. All right. Got her. All right, come here. Can you hold her? Come here. Can you hold her? All right, got her. All right. All right, for those that don't know what's going on here, when you span their feathers out, you'll see you have these small feathers and then it starts the big feathers. You do not cut into these small feathers. We only cut across the big ones like so. Why don't we cut the little ones? Because those can hurt them. These are their actual flight feathers, the big ones, so that's why we cut those. And it's key, important, that you use a sharp pair of scissors. That way you don't put pressure on the quicks too much. There we go, one more left. Oh, oh man. Oh. Q-tip was like, oh my God. It's definitely easier with one more person helping. Alright. Hi, right, we'll have to see how well that came out once I go back and review all the footage using a seven year old to film while you're chasing chickens around. Now that we got all the chickens all worked up and fired up, you can see that that poultry hook, you can get them for a little bit, but you gotta be pretty quick to get on them after that. So I don't pin the chicken down very hard. Typically once I hook them and I put my hand on their back, you'll notice their back end arches up. And I really think in their mind, they're interpreting that a rooster's trying to mount them because if you ain't ever seen a rooster with a hand, it's kind of brutal. Nonetheless, guys, that's what it is. The key is they'll only cut those really long feathers. Do not cut into that next layer above them of where they start to become smaller feathers because you only want to cut their flight feathers. Otherwise, you could damage your bird. So be very careful and use very sharp scissors. I know something I can give the chickens to make them happy again. It's kind of like a dog. You got to have treats and that fixes everything. If you haven't seen the video, we did some DIY feed a long time ago and it is by far the chicken's favorite thing. It's got all kinds of good stuff, black oil, sunflower seeds, cracked corn, millet, flax seed, and we got some mixed up with some of our layer pellet, but I'll throw that in there. They'll love it, they'll forgive me. We'll go on about our business. Here, go take that in there and toss it on the ground. Well, this is my way of saying I'm sorry, but it was needed. What was that? You mad because you didn't get a snack? Oh, look at them teeth. You're so ugly. So yeah, guys, if you need you a simple tool to catch a bird and don't want a big net, get you that Premier One poultry hook. It's not too expensive. So guys, that's gonna wrap everything up for today. Whole lot going on. I apologize I couldn't film much of that, but I at least want to get you caught up to speed. I want to make sure I said thank you. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. Enjoy every moment of life. And as always, guys, we'll see you here real soon. On the next video. On the next video. See you guys. Bye.